We're a media development organization, which means we do a lot of journalism training, free press projects, and we also run an online news and analysis site about Central and Eastern Europe. Well, we have a mission of trying to improve the state of journalism throughout Central and Eastern Europe. So we do that by encouraging journalists to write better and teaching them new skills and also giving them a place to publish because we think obviously that the media is a huge part of democracy and still even more than 25 years after the changes in our region uh, a lot of countries still struggle with uh, with democracy and freedom of the press. There are a whole bunch of different difficulties I would say. I think with, with a lot of organizations, a lot of people trying to do social innovation, it's still a funding problem and I think also trying to find donors who understand social innovation because traditional donors they fund projects. They don't traditionally fund innovative startup type of activities. So that's a real challenge. You have to find a more progressive donor who's kind of willing to take a chance on something which is kind of like a startup. Most donors still don't have this type of startup mentality where they, they will risk. Uh, they want to be very conservative. You do a project for a year, you apply again. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges to do something kind of more, more innovative. I think partly it's about framing, framing things in the way that work better uh, in that kind of donor mentality um, and also trying to reach and find different types of donors and, and really trying to be more ambitious and, and take a risk because I think a lot of us can get stuck with just doing projects year after year after year. Um, but to try to start up and, and do something completely new is, is risky. Uh, so I think that's trying to find out who would actually fund something like that, but also trying to change the mentality of the donors themselves and tell them that like in today's world, it's not enough just to keep funding the same projects over and over again, but to try to start up more ambitious ideas that can, can really change things. I think at least from the nonprofit world, there's, there's a lot of synergy or overlap now with, with the startup world. So I think you have to have that same kind of mentality. And, and it can be tough in the NGO world because you don't want something to just fail and you worry it could hurt your reputation. But I think you have to look at the startup world where you have these kind of serial innovators and not everything works all the time. Um, so to take a risk and just kind of learn from it and, and move on if unfortunately it doesn't, doesn't work out. Definitely there are different income streams that we had at the beginning that are no longer functional and we had to just find different income streams. And also I think one of the more innovative things that we started recently was this crowdfunding platform for journalists and it was a response to the fact that we think training, which we do a lot of and we believe strongly in, has its limitations. So we were training really smart, skilled people but they would go home to their home countries and there just wouldn't, wouldn't be money for them. To, to do stories that they wanted to do. So we try to think of a solution and ways to help them raise money. So in, in many ways it's responding to the limitations we saw with the traditional way of doing things. Just, just training, for example. It, you, can't, you can't solve a problem just with training most of the time. So I think it, the, the most, one of the most important things is trying to think how not to be grant dependent from the beginning. Like for any kind of NGO related activity. Chances are you will rely on grants to some extent, but at least from the beginning, try to think very early on about different alternative income streams. And it might not be something that you can survive only on, but the idea of sustainability, I think, is crucial. But it doesn't mean no grants. It could be that your sustainable solution includes grants, but also includes two or three other income streams. So I think that's, that's part of the key, is just trying to think all the way from the beginning who, who, who are, the, who are the, the, what's the audience for my product? To kind of think in, in the way of a startup, that you're producing a product. And most NGO people, they're, they're so passionate about what they're doing, they're not thinking in this kind of like very basic way. We're producing a product or a service and who's going to buy it? And it can be a donor who's the ones who's going to actually pay for you to do that, to do that, perform that service. But think of it, what is the audience? It's not enough, and I think we've learned as well, to just create something that you think is wonderful and people are going to come to use it or buy for it. There has to still be an audience for it. It might be a mission-driven service or product, but you, should, you need to think about who's actually going to consume it and, and what the audience is and how to tailor the product to them. 
which is really difficult to get out of that mentality because I think most NGOs are just thinking they do wonderful, important things to change the world, uh, but you still have to find someone who's going to consume your service. For us, we were forced to do that because our predecessor had been way too dependent on one donor. So from the beginning, we knew we wanted to have different income streams, and we were always trying to figure out what can we do on the commercial side to at least take the burden off of uh, off of this grant dependency. And it goes up and down, and I think we have to experiment and see what's what works and what doesn't. We've had to discontinue doing certain things, try different things. So I think to constantly keep experimenting and and just cancel something if it doesn't if it doesn't work or if it's if it doesn't seem like it's adding to the to the core. And I think look around and see what people are doing. It's not, it's not a bad thing to copy other people. Uh, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. People are doing great innovative stuff. And if you want to adjust it and adapt it and copy it, I mean, you can say where the inspiration came from. But I think there's also a stress maybe too often that innovation, it always has to be some kind of completely new idea. But the innovative thing can be taking someone else's idea and adapting it for your purposes. So I think like the idea of innovation, it should be understood in a much broader way than it often is. It doesn't mean you have to come with come up with something which no one has ever seen before on the planet. It can be kind of adapting, using it, and adjusting it in an, in an innovative way um, that works for you.